Hello, this is Haka the Bean, and I'm here to read to you the seventh part of of the SCP canon for the end of death. This part being in relating to SCP-3448, or Project Damarang. Item number, SCP-3448. Object class, Domiel. That means it contains another anomaly. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-3448 is to be, remain active at Site 2718. Personnel are to inspect 3448 daily for additional messages from SCP-3448-A. Project Damarang is to research any method of escape proposed or indicated by SCP-3448-A. Description SCP-3448 refers to the communication and developed and used by Project Damarang, utilizing technology used in MRIs, particle accelerators, and anomalous rituals. SCP-3448 is capable of allowing an individual to die while remaining in contact with the world of the living. SCP-3448 resembles an MRI machine, however, its additional anomalous components are connected externally through the use of jumper cables and the custom circuit boards. SCP-3448 is the primary tool used by Project Damarang to complete its objective. To contain in the Damarang-class cognito hazard known as death. I'm usually better at doing this. Anyway. <sighs> subjects are introduced to SCP-3448 through its main opening. Once the subject has fully entered the cavity, the anomalous components in SCP-3448 to transfer the subject into a half-death state. Death here is referred to as a conceptual form of death. This is, is distinct from any notion of afterlife and is not restricted necessarily to organisms. In which all bodily functions cease. Any subject occupying this conceptual state is, is referred to as Bob. Henceforth, because I do not want to say that long on his second name. This allows the consciousness to roam free from the body after it has entered the state of death. Henceforth, Earth referred to as SCP-3448-1. Unfortunately, most documentation about the in nature of SCP-3448-1 has been lost. See Addendum 30. Forty-eight-one. While the consciousness leaves the a brain, and in this manner, anomalous electrical activity continues despite any source of uh, of energy. This activity is referred to as res, residual signals, which replicate how the brain would react to be introduced to SCP-3448-1 while it was alive. This means the residual signals reflect the activity of the brain if it were exposed to the same similar as the conceptual representation of the subject. By interacting with these electrical signals, the foundation is able to establish two-way communication with SCP-3448-8A, I mean Bob. In order to better understand the residual signals, they are interpreted by an additional anomalous as component of, of SCP-3448. 48. This component will generally produce an image, although individual words have been observed. Adrian Anthony and Michaels, the only a successful subject to have utilized SCP-3448 outside of preliminary testing, is the current SCP-3448 A, or is the current Bob. As of this writing, Bob still exhibits standard residual or signal activity. Addendum 34-48-1. Below is a series of records from the usage of SCP-3448. Due to the destruction of formal testing documentation as for the 
Actions of 054. The majority of recovered documents take the form of lab notes or residual signal communication and reports. This is an interview. SCP-3448 Preliminary Subject Interview Please state your name for the record. Agent Anthony Michaels. How long have you served the Foundation? 14 years. What is your next assignment? The one that will make sure I don't serve for 15 years. You know this is the, for the formal record, right? Yeah, but you know how it is. I gotta get a joke in sometime, and we both know I only have so many jokes left. I know, I know, but let's get back to the interview for now. Why did you volunteer for this assignment? I did it for my family. Can you elaborate? Well, my dad's been on his deathbed for a while now. I've spoken to him, though, and once he comes around, and he talks about the things he was going to do when he gets out of the hospital. He told me he was going to hike the Apple Lake and Trail. That thing goes all the way from Georgia to Maine. This man brought up three kids by himself, and all he wanted at the end was to go on a nice hike. That doesn't quite answer the question. Yeah, I guess it's not a super explicit answer, isn't it? <laughs> Please, we need you to do this for the report. It has to be more professional than this. Sorry, sorry. I meant to say that, well, I want to give my dad another chance. Sure, he might not make it all the way through the trail, or up the mountains, or wherever. But I don't want him to, to die. He deserves more than what uh, he's got. And I'm willing to sacrifice myself in his stead. He's practically done the same for me. And you do recognize that the Foundation is not required to adhere to your wish? This means that in the case of your mission, your mission succeeds, we are allowed to choose your father for selective termination? I'll take the chance. If we're containing the Reaper, I trust the Foundation will make sure he's only light off his new leash when it's really necessary. Furthermore, I don't believe my dad is one of those cases. Do you have anything else to add? I guess I'd like to thank you for giving me this opportunity. Well, um, it's been my pleasure, Agent Michaels. As working in with the, with the Project Dumbrung was mine. Okay, that will conclude our interview. <sighs> SCP-3448 Preliminary in Testing Lab Notes Alright, breaking in the first page of the lab notebook Just a few uh, just scribbles of my thoughts during the official test for later Guess this is young Yeah So to future reader person Yes, it means you future Emily you should probably take a look at the formal report instead. We confirmed that this thing works as well, unless it's ever going to. I mean, the annual test of the individual parts work. That's the best confirmation we're going to get without throwing someone in there 100%. So, the current plan is this. Send in Michaels and have him look around. Get him to investigate and learn what this place is like. Who else is there? Etc. Then, and we will all then use our newfound understanding of the Reapers of the Reapers to figure out how to contain him. Finally, we'll, we'll do our job, I guess. It's our Deborah and Clat. It's Moby Dick, after all. Except without out the killing it part. Michael's finished his training to use SCP-3448 a few days ago. Not sure how quickly he'll be able to adjust to being dead, which means that we don't know how long it'll be until he can actually talk to us, right? But now, I was as good a time as any. Worst comes to worst, I love the guy, but he's already going to be dead. We just let the man rest in peace. Too bad we couldn't use a class D, but the higher ups don't trust that they'll listen to orders. It's not like we could threaten termination. I caught Tony clearing out his quarters today. When I asked him how he felt, out he made some joke like, It's not like it's going to kill me twice. And he threw out a box of personal mementos. 
including that teddy bear I gave him at the Foundation Christmas gift exchange. He can't be doing too well, but then again, he's probably as ready as he'll ever be. The teddy bear is now in my office. Seems weird. SCP-3448, Day 1, Imagery Results 8.30 to 9, Intense Flashing and Flickering 9 to 9 5, Image Resembled Rough Seas 9 5 to 12 5, Intense Flashing and Flickering 12 5 to 12.48, Formed in 3 hours after the previous image, appears to be a humanoid figure surrounded by hundreds of insects. This continues for 43 minutes before the insects disperse. The now considerably swollen and humanoid falls to the ground. 1248 to 1848, which is 6.48pm. A shade of grade. 1848 to 2352, 1152pm. Appears to resemble the rough seas from the 839 image. However, the water is replaced with the insects from the 1205 to 1248 images. I'm sorry if I use my normal voice. This is a long unread, and I don't think I can do it all in her voice. It's working. It's not going well, but it's working. God, what the heck was Tony thinking when he signed up for this stuff? We knew that death was supposed to get worse and worse as it went. At least that's how the recording described it. We thought that reserving the body would reduce some of the perception issues, but I don't think it's working as well as we wanted. But it's just the first day. Our plan gives us 10 days before we jump ship and move on to another subject. Oh, so we need to move Jared to a different station. He vomited all over the floor during his monitoring shift. I don't totally blame him, but he could have done the rest of us a favor by hobbling off to the bathroom faster. Hopefully tell anyone send back too many more visuals like that. SCP-3448, Day 2, Imaging Results, 2-203, an ACA man lying in the desert. There appears to be a, an oasis far in the background. 203-1003, Static, 6-12, a man in the fetal position, lying in the corner of a room made of compacted dirt, where his bones and roots can be seen for tree, rooting from the walls. 12-6, 12-18. Insect wings emerge from the walls and begin fluttering. SCP-3448, Day 2, Lab Notes. Okay, looks like he's calmed down. Not entirely coherent, but it's something. We're going to see if we can talk to him tomorrow. I say talk, but I really mean mess with his brainwaves in a, a meaningful way. Hey, we know it works, but we have no, no clue what it actually feels like. Hard to get that sort of feedback from lab rats. With these tests work, we're on to something. We'll get him to start exploring, I guess. I don't think that's the right word. Or maybe it is? We don't know if this is a place or a state of mind or what. Recording that L54 may show us makes it sound like he's still here on Earth, just experiencing things in the most terrible way possible. I'm more picturing a hellscape aesthetic. SP-3448, Day 3, Imaging Results 6-603, a caterpillar crawling up the trunk of a tree 803-813, to leaves blowing in the wind, the direction of the breeze alternates rapidly, so the leaves appear to be waving 913-915, to a caterpillar from 6-603 image eats some of the leaves from, from the 803-813 to image 915 to 115, various shades of, of red. 115 to 115, an emaciated man punches a wall. 315 to 329, same scene from 915 to 915 image, except the caterpillar has stopped eating and leaves have all been replaced by hands of the same size, which continue to wave in the wind. This continues for 10 minutes until the wind stops. All hands except for one hang limply. Raining a hand makes an okay sound. The caterpillar begins to wrap itself in a cocoon. 1929-2103 The hands from the previous image moves frantically to swallow insects. Insects do not resemble a single known species. They have singers 
resembling those of, of bees and legs resembling those of spiders. The caterpillar has fully formed its cocoon and is undeserved for the duration of the visual. SCP-3448, Day 3 Lab Notes He's finally becoming coherent, so thank God for that. I mean, I use coherent lightly. He's as together er, as a consciousness flowing through space could ever be. He waved to say hi, I think, so this is fine. In other news, I talked to Tony's sister, Joyce. Apparently, she works in the biology department at Site-23. I didn't tell her about what's up with Tony, of course, but I did manage to bring up insects. Apparently, Tony has some sort of insectophobia, but it's not too bad that you call it a phobia. Like, they just freak him out. Either way, it makes for some interesting interpretations of Tony's visuals. I can't tell if SCP-34 or 48-1 is full of bugs or if it's full of whatever you're afraid of, or if that's just Tony's interpretation of it. I'm leaning towards the last option, though, if anything because of an ideology standpoint. That being in what you make of it sounds kind of poetic. Not that any of my poetry will show up in the form of report. I wonder what I'd see. Day 4 imaging results. 10 to 1422. A man searches through a garden. It is unclear what he is looking for. The garden extends indefinitely in all directions, and exploration takes a man through large groves of daisies. For the majority of the trek, the man stays on a path outlined by two hedges that run alongside him. At one point, the man stops, looks at a patch of daisies, and steps over the hedge towards toward the flowers. The image changes after his foot hit, hits the, the ground. 422 to 1722. Various 1422, I mean, sorry. It's various shades of green and purple. 1722 to 1727. The man from 10 to 014 in the image was uncovered. What has uncovered some of the dirt and starts into the ground with a look of awe and terror on his face. What the man is staring at is obscured by the daisies. After three minutes, a thin, wrinkled hand is seen reaching into the fray and taps the man on the shoulder. 1727 to 1827. Static. 1827 to 1839. The man is standing behind the hedges now. A small girl is covering in the patch of land with dirt. Or using her hands. A large quantity of insects form around the girl. She appears content. It is unknown if the girl acknowledges the insects or not. The man's left hand appears to be swollen from this of singing. 23-39-2-1-0-2 The man walks back through the garden and the way he came aim in in image 1. The left hand remains swollen. He is carrying a tulip in his right hand, which he looks at during the walk. No other individuals can be seen. After an hour and eight minutes, the man suddenly looks back over his shoulder, shrugs, and continues walking. Day 4 Lab Notes Explorations are today, and by exploration I mean Tony actually figuring out how to convey this place to us. I don't think it's actually all flowers and sun and shine. Luckily, he seems, seems to be mostly coherent at this point, although I think his communication is still more cryptic than we'd like. I'll take it it over how he acted it a few days ago. We all know who the girl is. Can't tell what she's supposed to represent. Most of us think she's that she's another person caught in this half-dead state, but we don't have any confirmation. Although, on the off chance we're right, the higher ups are in operation to infiltrate the usual suspects. See, um, chaos and surgery, serpent's hand and global cold coalition, etc. To make sure none of them have been nuts to the punch. Assuming Tony understands us well enough, we're going to give him the go-ahead to interact more with the girl and report back. Day 5 imaging results. 5 to 520, a sky covered in gray clouds. 520 to 1020, a static. 1020 to 1030, a teddy bear, a stuffed animal crow, and a girl all set around the table. The girl offers a tea to both the teddy bear and the crow. Neither party reacts. She proceeds to pour tea for the two. Ooh, regardless. 
1030 to 1330, a warm shade of yellow. 1330 to 1416. Same as the 1020 and 1030 image, except the teddy bear somehow has a grip on the teacup and the crow is facing the teddy bear. The girl appears to be conversing with the stuffed animals despite their lack of response. 1416 to 1516, a light shade of red. 1516 to 1538, same as the 1330 to 1416 image. Except the crow has started to fall apart at the seams. Insects crawl out from between the stitching. Neither the teddy bear nor the girl appear to notice. 1538 to 1638. Flickering between dark red and black. 1638 to 1644. Born in the 1600s, same as image 4, except the insects have eaten parts of the teddy bear. The girl appears surprised and upset. After 5 minutes, she looks, stares at the stuffed crow, which is now mostly covered with insects. She sets down her tea and leaves. 1944 to 2004. A man in the corner of a room crawled into the fetal position. He rocks back and forth. His body appears to be swollen and covered from small insect bites. Day 5 notes. I think half our group is starting to get more and more uncomfortable with the creepy crawlies. I can only imagine what it's like for Tony. We're going to give him a day to recuperate from whatever the hell Whatever the heck today was. No exploration or interviews or whatever. In other news, we made some progress on the girl today. She looks almost identical to Tony's younger sister, Joyce, when she was... as eight. Keyword, almost. I can't tell if it's Tony not quite getting the image back, right? Or if this thing actually just looks like Tony's sister. But with slightly elevated cheekbones and a slightly darker shade of brown in her hair. Or maybe that's how Tony remembers his sister. Or maybe there's just some kid out there who looks almost like her. Honestly, these those details aren't super important. I bet tomorrow our talk with Tony will clear things up. Day six imaging results. Ten to ten o five. A man sitting with his back against dirt wall. Plant roots and bones retreat but from the wall and ceiling. He appears to be tired and sweating. 1205 to 1208, a single question mark. 1308 to 1314, the man from um, 10 in the image is holding a doll of a small girl and a doll of a crow. He positions them next to each other, with the girl's arms around the crow and a crow a swing around the girl. 1414 to 1414, the man shrugs. 2300 to 2313, the man is sitting with his is back against the wall of the room again. After five minutes, his head jerks to look off screen. He quickly gets up and rushes out of the room and through the opposite direction. After three minutes, a swarm of insects enter the screen. 23.13 to midnight. It's just white. Lab notes. Day six. Frick, 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 frick. He's fricked. Dang it, Tony. Frick. Okay, breather. Sorry, future me. I shouldn't use these notes for venting. Luckily, it won't show up in the formal report. Anyways, Tony was... Well, he didn't learn much about the girl. At least not much that he, he told us. I think she's friends with the bugs or with the crow thing, at least. Or maybe they're the same entity. They're definitely connected. Now we're all waiting for Tony to get back to us. Luckily, we've got coffee. Day 7 in imaging results. 1600 to 1643. A man running through the garden of daisies. He appears to be limping slightly and checks over his shoulder at regular intervals. 1643 to 1907. Flashing between bright and light red and black. Day 7 lab notes. That was it. He's just... He's just still running. We've been trying to think of something to help him. Jared floated the idea of sending him bug spray. I know he was joking because Jared can't help himself from being a wise ass. That's when he's stressed out, but maybe he's onto something. I'm going to look, look into how to send Tony a care package tomorrow. Day 8 imaging results. 
two to uh, two forty three. A man is running through a garden. After thirty minutes, he passes by a girl who appears to be planting something. He calls out to her. The girl turns around. She is planting another daisy. He rushes to the girl, takes her by, and takes her by the hand. The girl begins to say something, but it's cut short as the man pulls her back to the path and resumes running. <sighs> the newly planted daisy remains the focus of the image. For another two minutes before it is overrun with insects. Okay, we've got something. It's a little out there, but it's all we you've come up with. So Tony's in a half dead state, right? But it's not like this is a conventional afterlife deal. It was built around a more abstract conceptual representation of death. So that means that all half dead things could end up there, right? Well, okay, the dead things end up there too, but we're less sure what exactly that looks like. But I can't believe I'm writing this. But if we have kill a thing, he has eyes as dumb as it sounds. But we want to send something in there to help Tony. We don't have another agent who is willing as him to take up this assignment. And I'll be danged if we lose our best shot at exploring this place. I don't know if Tony has things or how inanimate objects really work on the other side. But we're grasping at straws anyway. Jared figured if we're going to send him something, we should send him some form of self-defense. Unfortunately, we're a little short-handed in terms of weaponry, so we're going to send him the next best thing. A lighter. Bugs don't like fire, right? I mean, maybe they're, they're not real, literally bugs, but fire is generally effective against things. Either way, it'll work fine to test it. Procedures. 1. Partially disassemble the light lighter. 2. Place lighter in SCP-3448. 3. Activate SCP-3448 at the same time. I, I'm trying to we'll finish this assembling the lighter. Maybe use a firecracker for this or like a mousetrap. I don't know. We'll figure it out. God, killing a lighter sounds so, so dumb, but frick it if we're going to, we're going to try. Day 9 Imaging Results Form that 4, a man and running through a garden carrying a lighter in one hand and pulling a girl behind him with the other. As the man runs, he looks confusedly at the device. After 4 minutes, he pockets the lighter. 10.04 to 10.29 A teddy bear the size of an average human sits against a door to a room. The wall consists of mud and dirt, with bones and roots sticking out. The girl from 4 sits at her at the mud and dirt with bones and roots sticking no it's inside of Saddam's room with her legs pulled against her chest she rocks back and forth slowly for three minutes before walking to the teddy bear she begins to speak as she tugs on the teddy bear's legs the girl appears to age rapidly the more she begs the teddy bear does not move 1629 to 1631 a man sang in the garden he is constantly stung or bitten and by a thick swarm of insects. A girl screams at him from nearby, ignored by the insects. The man looks at the girls, screaming back, and it reaches into his pocket. 1631 to 1731, red static. 1731 to 1754, a bonfire. 1754 to 2054, gray. 2054 to 2354, a girl repeatedly stabs a man lying on the ground with a sharp and femur. They are surrounded by burnt insects. At the corpses. Holy frick! Oh wait, day nine lab notes. Holy frick! It worked. And then he frick. I don't know what happened. The entire past week has felt like I've been watching someone's acid trip. Okay, we still don't know what the girl is, but stabbing Tony means she's hostile, which means we need to do something. I caught in a favor and got a handgun delivered here. Same procedure as with the lighter. Day 10 Imaging Results 154-301 An old woman beats a man lying on, lying on the ground with a femur. They are surrounded by uh, burnt insect corpses. 301-401 A little girl straddling a man 
and with her, her arms in the air. The man that aims a handgun at her. They are surrounded by teddy bears, all of which are looking at the girl. 401 to 403. A cocoon sits is on a tree branch where all of the leaves are replaced with hands. The cocoon breaks open and a mouth exits. 5 to 502. Same as the 301 uh, to 401 image, except the teddy bears are all grasping liars with, with the flames exposed, and all of the garden is on fire. The wall can see halfway between the handgun and the girl's head. 502 to 6. Bright red. 6 to 6. Same as the reverse image, except the, the flowers are replaced with chains, which are still burning. The girl has been replaced with a skeleton, but her hair remains. The man has become further emaciated. And also resembles a skeleton. A chain wraps itself around both the man and the skeleton and of the girl. Teddy bears look on from the darkness. 600 to 700. Dark red. 7 to 702. The bullet it penetrates the girl's head. 702 to 1302. Static. 1302 to 1316. A man stands in the middle of a garden. All the flowers that can be seen are blooming. Insects and corpses rain from the sky. The girl is no longer present. A stuffed animal crow lies next to Tony with a bullet sized hole in its head. After 13 in minutes, the following words appear at the bottom of the screen. I hope you enjoy your hike, Dad. Day 10, lab notes. Oh frick, what even just... Crap, I don't think I've ever seen been so torn over one of my experiments working twice in a row. But still, he... He shot her. I mean, of course he would. We gave him the gun, but I can't believe it. Like, I didn't actually think that was going to happen. Again, what else was going to happen, but just... Frick. And like five minutes later, the call started. First, it was Joyce... It was from Joyce talking about how her, how her father wasn't dying. I told her to contact me if anything strange started happening with her family, which might relate to Tony. But this wasn't a common form of call. She was just so... I don't freaking know. Excited? Panicked? Ecstatic? Terrified? After that, was a call from a 54. Only a council member that knew about our little project signed off on the funding and everything. He congratulated me on our success and told me to burn it all. That's why I went and sucked in. It really should have been apparent from the start. It was in our contracts. So we picked, it's what we told people on, the, on our first day. This project has a single objective. Containing the Damaranga class Kneel Hazard known as death. We did it? No, we really didn't do it. All those years of theorizing and studying the data, scouring anomalous burial sites and halls from MTF raids, and finally we come face to face with the Reaper. And what do we do? We freaking shoot uh, 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 them. Now all we have is a tombstone reading, rest in peace, resting in peace. We freaked up. We didn't contain that. We neutralized it. That was part seven, I think, of the SCP canon for the end of death. I hope you enjoyed. Please like the video, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you tomorrow.